Uh, kia ora, Morrinsville community of faith. Uh, thank you, Richard, for letting me come and share uh, with you, even if it is not in person, but on video. So as you probably already know, I'm, my name's Peter Foster, and I'm the regional leader for the Waikato and the Bay of Plenty area. And I've really enjoyed working with Richard and with Tom and uh, love having Katharina on our on our association so it's great to be with you and, and to share with you but let's let's get into this because this is a video and uh, let, let's let's get into my my message and um, before before I'm, I, I want to talk to you about change and before I go any further I want you to pause the video and think briefly about the most significant change that you have had in your life over the last two years. So if you can do that, you may want to talk about it amongst yourself. If you can do that and just think about um, the most significant change that you've had in the last two years and have that at the forefront of your mind as I continue to share. So pause your video now, have a talk and, um, and then start the video again. I reckon there are two types of change, and I call these two types of change scripted change and unscripted change. Scripted change is not bad change. We live with scripted change all the time. For example, this year I turn 60 years old, and so what I'm thinking about now is in five or six or seven years time, or put it this way, I'm closer to retirement than I'm not. How am, I, how am I starting to work my life out to get to that point where I either retire or, or, or have a change of direction? It's scripted change. You're not quite sure how to work it through, but you're, it's expected. Scripted change is when a child is turning five years old. You know it's going to happen. Uh, they're going to go to school. How do I prepare myself for that? Um, when you go to the doctor and you find out that you're pregnant, perhaps, there's scripted change over the nine months as you work through all, all that, sort of, that, that sort of stuff. Um, scripted change, this, this is change that can be seen in scripted change. You have a sense of control. You learn to understand it. You tend to have timing on your side. You can map things out. And you can take control a little bit of your emotional side and your physical response to this change is okay. And you have some, the main thing is, is you have some element of control over it. Then there's unscripted change. Well, unscripted change is a whole different story. For you, it puts you in a position where you are semi out of control. It's when stuff happens and you are called to react straight away. This is when the adrenaline starts and concerns start to rise within you and you may have sleepless nights or various things like this. This could be a diagnosis of an illness, uh, a significant accident that happens, a government out of the blue mandate, for example, that we're coping with at the moment. The unexpected loss of a job, a surprise by someone, a phone call, an unscripted situation that means you have to address your scripted change and make and perhaps make a new decision or you may even have to change direction overnight. After a while, these unscripted change can be start to become emotionally draining. They get tired. You don't have a sense of control, but yet you are looking for it somewhere, endeavouring it to grasp it. You're trying to find some sense of order in the chaos that has been presented to you. And your expectations may not be met, and perhaps you've got to re readjust a dream or a direction. And the, these are tough times. These are simply scripted change, you have a sense of control. Unscripted change, you don't have a sense of control. And whatever it is, change can be tough. And often an unscripted change, it can be kind of exciting too. But an unscripted change, it can be daunting and concern. 
both of these changes can be devastating. Both of these changes can be life-giving. Both are draining, and we need to be sustained to cope with both. We get to a point where we think, this is crazy, I'm over it, I want to get off the bus. Can I just have a small break? Can I find some sort of oasis in this change? I want to get you to pause the video now and think about that change that you thought of at the beginning of this time. And then start to just do a bit of a stock take. Is this scripted change or unscripted change? Or am I running with scripted change and, and is there unscripted change going on? There's definitely unscripted change going on in our nation at the moment. And then just stop and think about it. How is your control levels? Do you feel in control in some of these? And how is your emotional and physical things with this? You may want to talk about it as well. So let's just pause the video now and think through those at this stage. Scripted and unscripted change. Have a chat about those things. Whatever change you are in, we need to look beyond ourselves. And often in any change that we have, we, 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 we track along. See, often in scripted change, scripted change is probably when you sit and analyze it, is the change that you less look to God for, actively look to God for. Unscripted change is often that change where you say, man, we better pray about this. Something's happening and it's out of my control. Let's pray about it. What we have to learn to do, I think, as followers of Jesus is to turn on our Holy Spirit radar amongst the change that we have and come to a point where we can acknowledge again that no matter what goes on, God is with us. I want to share with you a psalm. 121. Here's probably David, the psalmist, that he writes this. He think He's thinking about change in his life and all that sort of stuff. And if there was someone in the Old Testament that had a lot of change going on, it was definitely, it was definitely David. And he writes this psalm here. Psalm 121, verses 1 to 2. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Again. Why don't you pause the video? Take one minute of time. You don't talk about it with your group and just stop and focus on this passage right now, these words right now. Think about the scripted change you're in. Think about the unscripted change you're in. Stop and think about these cha changes and just soak in this passage. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's pause and just reflect on Psalm 121. I hope when you did that, you had a sense of the presence of the Holy Spirit with you. And that you come out of that and say, whatever change we are in, God is with us. You know, often in unscripted change, we don't often think that God is sustaining us because we have a sense of control. We, 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 we've mapped things out. There's a normality about this unscripted change. For example, like I said, um, most people in this world retire and look towards retiring. Most people in this world where young families will, will at some stage have a child and pregnancy. Most people in this world who have children have to send them away to school or send them off to university. Most of us at some stage in our life have had to choose to change our job or do something like that. It's scripted change. 
And often we get through that and say, great, I got through it. Thank you, Lord. But the reality is, is in that scripted change, it is God who is actually sustaining us. He gives us that. And, uh, and, 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 and we need to reflect on that. An unscripted change, again, it's completely it's it's not completely different as well, but we tend to be more astutely aware that where is God in this? And we start to look for God in this. Unscripted change we can often pray a whole lot more about. Unscripted change is where we probably get grumpy. Unscripted change is where we probably get short tempered at times. Unscripted change, some of these emotional things come out and um and stuff starts to happen and we start to blame and we start to think about things and we start to show poor responsibility onto other people. But the reality is is as God is with us in these. And all these different emotions happen because we want to try and gain control where sometimes we've just got to say, we've just got to take our hands off and let God. And we've got to look to the, lift up the eyes to the hills from where will my help come? I guess the closest hills around you guys at Morrinsville would be the Kaimai Range. What if you started a practical thing of every time you saw the Kaimai Range, you were reminded again of I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord. You know, the disciples had to face this. Um, I want to read a passage of scripture again for you in John 14 verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. You know, the disciples, when they heard this, were probably a little mystified by his words as their script, their script was that Jesus would be hanging around for them forever and a day and that maybe he was going to take some sort of political takeover But yet Jesus' words were probably meant to be calming, but I wonder if they were mystified about what he was saying. What do you mean you're leaving? What do you mean you're leaving an advocate here? You see, Jesus' script was completely different to the disciples' script. And so Jesus is now reminding them, saying, hey, coming up, you're going to have some unscripted change. But I want to remind you that I will leave you with the Holy Spirit. And he gives us this beautiful image. I will not leave you as orphaned. What an unusual word to use, but yet maybe it's not an unusual word. When you think of that word, you think of kind of unconditional love. It means parenting. It means family. It means I will be with you as a family is with you. I will be with you as parents are with you and more so. Why don't you... Take a minute. Rest in those words. Know the comfort of the Spirit in those words, especially the words that says, I will not leave you orphaned. Put those words with Psalm 121. Where does my help come? I look to the hills from whence my help comes. I I can rest in the Lord. You know, when it comes to this church, God has got it under control. God is the leader at Morrinsville Baptist Church. And God has brought you through a lot of changes over the years. And you guys are doing a wonderful job in Morrinsville in revealing the gospel to the the community around you. 
And every now and then we can stop and think we're doing this under our own power. But you know, it's God that's doing it. It's God that's doing the leading. And as you submit to him, he allows that change process to, to, to come apart. And I believe in this time of unscripted change with COVID and pandemics, one of the things that he's doing is preparing our hearts. He's preparing our hearts for the things that are to come. You see, there is a divine script that God works through. And as we keep our eyes on Jesus and look to him and do the, ma the, the, the mahi that he calls us to, he works it out and he is constantly with us. One of my things that I want to do in 2022 amongst the churches that I help and, and serve is to elevate a famous psalm. It's interesting because most of us use this psalm at a funeral. It's primarily used at a funeral, and some of you will now be knowing what that psalm is. It's Psalm 123. But why is it that we predominantly use Psalm 23 at a, at a, at a funeral? This is my take. Because funerals can often be unscripted change. Even if you know it's going to happen, when it actually happens, when the death actually happens, it's still hard on the friends and the family. It's never easy. And funerals are often places where we feel less helpful, where we feel less in control. And we want to do something, but we can't. We want, we want to take away the pain or we want to take away the loss or help someone through their grief. And we struggle at time with words. Funerals are also times when we look beyond. So what an awesome psalm to use at a funeral. But often when we use this psalm at a funeral, I wonder if we're, we think we're talking to the person in the casket. Look, the reality is, tongue in cheek, the person in the casket doesn't need Psalm 23 because they're already with the Lord. What well, my mission is in 2022 is to bring Psalm 23 into everydayness. And to bring Psalm 23 into the various change things that happen to us over the years and over our lifetime. An unscripted change, an unscripted change. You know, let's take the whole dynamic of over the last two years with pandemics and COVID-19. What if we were to put into that this passage? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Hey, you guys in Morrinsville, you know about green pastures. You know the benefit of green pastures. You know the health that comes to animals from green pastures and how green pastures create an economic benefit. This is... What Paul, what David is describing for us, that this is a place of, of growth. This is a place where Jesus is with us. So let me read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Psalm 23 is about today. Psalm 33 about where have you put God with amongst your unscripted change and your scripted change? Where have you put God in your life? Let's just pause for a minute. Reflect again on Psalm 23. Where, what does Psalm 23, what part does Psalm 23 play in your life right now, right at the moment, and for the change that you expect is going to happen over the while? Do that. You may want to talk about it, or you may just want to think about it. You know, in summary, I just want to say to you, Morrinsville, 
and the people of Morrinsville, that in this unprecedented time of change, God's got this. God's with us. You know, we don't have to get angry. We don't have to get upset. We don't have to get disappointed. As a church, if there's a, cha- as if there's a call for change for you, you don't have to lose the plot. You don't have to do all that. Because ultimately we have the ability to put God in charge of that. And we've got the ability to be sustained by Christ and to be led by the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you over this time to continue to look up, to continue to put your life in the hands of God, to look at John 14, to reflect on Psalm 23 and Psalm 121 and come out to the point where you acknowledge again that God has got this. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for everyone who has seen this small bit video. I pray that the Psalms that we've read and the passages that we've said would be powerful for each one of them as they inject those things into the change that they face. And Lord, I pray for change that they face. Lord, as a nation we have change, I pray, continue to pray for our whole pandemic and COVID and vaccinations and non-vaccinations and mandates and all that sort of stuff. And I want to pray again and thank you, Lord, that you've got this. Lord, we don't know the full answers, but we thank you that you've got a scripted change for our nation. And we want to see that happen. And for that change that's personal to us, Lord, I pray that we'd be able to continue to put you amongst it. Lord, we pray for this and we pray and thank you that you've given us the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And may we learn daily what it means to hear your prompting and guiding. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to leave you with a few thoughts to talk about in what ways can you make psalm 23 and psalm 121 an everyday psalm for you in what ways can you make psalm 23 and psalm 121 everyday psalm for you in what ways and maybe you could share is how do you bring god into your situations into your everyday situations in your life what do you do what are your routines what are your rhythms that give space for god to interact with you in your life and the final thing is this what could you do differently or be differently How do you react with unscripted change? And could you change that reaction? And how could you change that reaction? And how do you bring God into those unscripted and those scripted change? So have a think through those things. Hey, God bless you, church. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Tom and the team that's there. Uh, Bless you. I I look forward to a a time where I can come to you face to face and all the best with your mission and that which you're involved with. And, um, And so thank you and God bless. See you later.